Hare Krishna devotees, welcome to Shloka Day. Today's Shloka is Shloka number two of chapter 15. Adhas chor dhvam prasrita stasya shakha. Adhas chor dhvam prasrita stasya shakha. Guna pravridha vishaya pravala. Guna pravridha vishaya pravala. Adhas chamulyan anusantatani. Adhas chamulyan anusantatani. Karmanu bandhini manushya loke. Karmanu bandhini manushya loke. Word for word meaning translation and perfect by His Divine Grace. Shila Esi Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada. Shila Prabhupada ki jai. Adhaha. Adaha. Downward. Downward. Cha. Cha. And. And. Urdhvam. Urdhvam. Upward. Upward. Prasritaha. Prasritaha. Extended. Extended. Tasya. Tasya. Its. Its. Shakha. Shakha. Branches. Branches. Guna. Guna. By the modes of material nature. By the modes of material nature. Pravridhaha. Pravridhaha. Developed. Developed. Vishaya. Vishaya. Sense objects. Sense objects. Pravalaha. Pravalaha. Twigs. Twigs. Adhaha. Adhaha. Downward. Downward. Cha. Cha. And. And. Ulani. Ulani. Roots. Roots. Anusantatani. Anusantatani. Extended. Extended. Karma. Karma. To work. To work. Anubandhini. Anubandhini. Bound. Bound. Manushya loke. Manushya loke. In the world of human society. In the world of human society. Translation. The branches of this tree. The branches of this tree. Extend downward and upward. Extend downward and upward. Nourished by the three modes of material nature. Nourished by the three modes of material nature. The twigs are the objects of the senses. The twigs are the objects of the senses. This tree also has roots going down. This tree also has roots going down. And these are bound to the fruitive actions of human society. And these are bound to the fruitive actions of human society. So Prabhupada writes in the purport that the description of the banyan tree is further explained here. Its branches spread in all directions. In the lower parts, there are variegated manifestations of living entities, human beings, animals, horses, cows, dogs, cats, etc. These are situated on the lower parts of the branches, whereas on the upper parts are higher forms of living entities the demigods, Gandharvas, and many other higher species of life. As a tree is nourished by water, so this tree is nourished by three modes of material nature. Sometimes we find that a tract of land is barren for want of sufficient water, and sometimes a tract is very green. Similarly, where particularly modes of material nature are proportionately greater in quantity, the different species of life are manifested accordingly. So ultimately, this tree of life is nourished by the three gunas. So the three gunas dictate the various types of species that are there under each of the categories of species. The twigs of the tree are considered to be the sense objects. By development of the different modes of nature, we develop different senses, and by the senses, we enjoy different varieties of sense objects. So in an upcoming shloka, the Lord is going to say, you know, depending on your own desires, you will get a specific type of ears, nose, mouth, lips, skin type, hair, etc. So everything is dictated by Satvagun, Rajagun, and Tamu. <clears throat> the twigs are sound, form, touch, and so on the sense objects. The subsidiary roots are attachments and aversions, which are byproducts of different varieties of suffering 
and sense enjoyment. The tendencies toward piety and impiety are considered to develop from these secondary roots, which spread in all directions, which means the raga and dvesha, attachment and aversion. These are the things that are um, the foundations for whether you're pious or impious. The real root is from Brahmaloka, and the other roots are in the human planetary system. After one enjoys the results of virtuous activities in the upper planetary systems, he comes down to this earth and renews his karma of fruitive activities for promotion. This planet of human beings is considered the field of activities. So I have read that a portion of your papa and a portion of your punya are withdrawn in each birth. So sometimes you will go to lower species, sometimes you go to the upper planetary systems. So even if we were to go to the upper planetary systems, ultimately, when you have used up the credits of your punya, you still have to come back and take birth in the earthly realm. So that is the complicated and vicious cycle of uh, karma from another parampara. <clears throat> Lord Krishna went on to explain how the human form is similar to the Ashwatta tree. So the Lord began this chapter in Shloka 1 by talking about that great tree which is upside down with its roots upwards and branches and leaves and etc. downwards. So it's the analogy is also to a human form. While in the human form, the soul performs karmas, which is the trunk of the tree, and its branches, shakhas, extend both upward, urdhva, and downward, adaha. Based on how the soul performed in its past and present forms, it is reborn. If it led a virtuous life, when reborn, it moves to the upward branches, which denote the celestial abodes of the Gandharvas, Devatas, etc. In case a soul was involved in sinful acts, in the next birth, it gets degraded to the downwards branches, which are for the nether regions and animal species. So downward branches means either you take birth in lower species of life or you take birth in the lower planetary systems like uh, Atala, Vitala, Sutala, Patala, etc. Similar to how water irrigates a tree, the three modes of material nature or the three gunas irrigate this eternal tree of material existence. So everything is being uh, controlled by the three gunas. Everything in this cosmos is being controlled by the three gunas. Brahmaji is controlled by Sattva. So different devatas are controlled by different gunas depending on their duties. So the sense objects generated by these gunas are like buds on the tree, vishaya pravalaha, which sprout causing further growth. These buds sprout creating several aerial roots. You know, the banyan tree has aerial roots which just then come down and reach the, um, the soil. So these buds sprout, creating several aerial roots of material desires. For example, another tree of the fig family, the banyan tree has aerial roots, which grow straight from the branches down to the ground. And with the passage of time, these turn into secondary trunks. So not only you have the core trunk of the tree, now you have many, many trunks supporting all these material desires. And these material desires just keep growing. More and more aerial roots grow and more and more you are stuck to the ground, which is stuck to this material cosmos. This makes the banyan tree grow huge, covering a large area. The great banyan in the botanical garden of Kolkata is one of the largest known banyan trees. It is spread across a vast area of about 4.7 acres. 4.7 acres, it's not a small area with over 3,700 aerial roots and crown circumference of about 486 meters. So this is our desires driven by the three gunas. 
So we are living that great banyan tree of a life, refusing to go back home. Likewise, in the context of the material world, the sense objects are like the buds on the Ashwatha tree, which sprout into aerial roots as they evoke desires of bodily pleasures in a person. To satiate these desires, a living being performs karma, which means to fulfill your desires, you act. But these desires are unending and keep increasing, similar to the aerial roots which provide nourishment to this metaphorical tree, causing its unlimited expansion. Eventually, the soul gets further entangled into this web of material consciousness. So, so the Lord is talking about this complex tree that holds us back in this material world, that prevents us from going back to him. That's the essence of the shloka, in the, in the, using the analogy of the upside down, upside down banyan tree. If you like our videos, please subscribe to our channel and turn on the bell notification. If you'd like to join our classes every day, please check the details in the description section of this video. We look forward to serving you.